Now, if you've uh, tuned into our V8 Supercar 1000 telecast from Mount Panorama, you will have, will, will have seen this story. Now, uh, we had an overwhelming response to the story. Network 10 got a lot of calls, and we're running it again. It's Barry Sheen proving he's good on four wheels as well. Hardened critics often pose the question, what the hell does a former world motorcycle champion know about car racing? The short answer is plenty. These days, Barry Sheen is a champion of the racers' cause, a motorsport commentator who speaks his mind irrespective of the consequences. It's the way Baz has always done it. What you mightn't know is that Barry made a switch to four wheels after he retired from motorcycle racing. Amongst other things, he campaigned in the British Touring Car Championship, mixing it with greats like Andy Rouse. The Sierra trying to get past Barry Sheen. Sheen closes the door, but Rouse right with them now. Ironically, Baz had never driven a V8 supercar, but that all changed in the weeks leading up to Bathurst. The car, Marcus Ambrose Pertec Ford, the venue, Queensland Raceway. The look on our boss's face if we bring back a damage bill, priceless. The last time Barry drove a race car was more than a decade ago. He still fits into the old race suit though. Ah, Mr Sheen, you're a fine figure of a man and don't think we haven't noticed. Check out the Gary Nixon Enterprises t-shirt. Even for a simple test, he still wore one of the old bike racing lucky charms. Don't kid yourself, the two-time world champ was pretty nervous. Oh, this is for the benefit of Greg, isn't it? So he has a nervous one before. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, step one. Strap Baz in for a ride to learn the finer points of the car. You looking forward to this, Marcus? Sorry? Are you looking forward to this? I can't wait, mate. <laughs> this is going to be better than taking my girlfriend around. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll probably squeal more, Baz. <laughs> No, just fun. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of fun. <laughs> no, I can't believe how quick it is. Stage two. Put Marcus in the passenger seat to give Baz some track pointers. The Tasmanian wasn't keen on this idea. He said to Ross, um, Ross, do I have to um, take Barry around? Ross said, yeah, he went. Okay. <laughs> I didn't actually say OK, so no way. <laughs> Then the moment of truth. Let Barry loose for around 15 laps on his own. How are the nerves from your point of view? Oh, no, we're all right. Yeah? We're just busy looking for keys for his car. <laughs> it didn't take long for Baz to get used to the tricky supercar gearbox. And if you reckon he wasn't trying, think again. Are you pushing the talk button, trying to talk to us, or are you just a bit scared to talk to us? Too busy concentrating there, Barry. It's the blue button on the steering wheel, Baz. The blue button on the steering wheel. Got to press that and then speak. I thought you said it was blue. Sorry, Baz, that was the old steering wheel, mate. <laughs> the new one must be green. But it was great. I mean, I loved it. And uh, the brakes are fantastic. And it just feels, feels so responsive. For the record, Barry's best time was just three seconds off race pace. A 1.15, good enough to qualify for the Queensland 500. A racer is a racer, it seems, no matter what side of the motorsport fence you come from. And he loved every moment of it.